Hey, I'm John. I'm one of the pastors here at Redeemer. Thanks for joining me for The Daily Word. Wherever you are, however you're watching, it is so cool that you would be here today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe so that you don't miss any of our content. Please hit the like button and please leave a comment. Let us know how this is ministering to you and, and let us know where you're watching from. It's, it'd be great just to see, hey, we're coming from here and there. It's a really cool thing to see all that God is doing. Today we're in 1 Corinthians 13, read at countless weddings as an expression of love and marriage. But it is actually written to describe the way that Christians are supposed to treat each other in a local church. So if you, the idea, big picture, is if you, if you don't use your spiritual gift, which means if you don't use your God-given ministry for the common good to bless other Christians, but you use it to promote and prop up yourself, you lack love, which is the core attitude and action of the Christian life. So we're going to use an outline that I got from Warren Wearsby. So chapters, uh, chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, we'll call love is essential. Love is essential. What Paul describes here is not sappy, emotional sentimentalism. This love is an action. It's doing what's best for others, even at personal cost to yourself. Now, this opening section is full of hyperbolic hypotheticals. These are not actual events. These represent extremes. That even if someone went to these extremes but didn't have love, the extremes they went to would mean nothing. That means verse 1 has nothing to do with speaking in tongues, being the language of angels that Satan can't understand. Don't forget Satan is an angel. These are things that I've heard in the past. The idea here is that if you speak every language... If you can speak every language, speak God's word directly from him, know everything there is to know about what's in the Bible, have the most faith that you could possibly have, give all your possessions away and die as a martyr, but don't love other people, especially other Christians, you are irritating, irrelevant, impoverished, and immature spiritually. The ministries Paul described in these first three verses are useless without love motivating the accomplishment of those ministries. Section two we'll call love as effectual, verses four to seven. Now, while it's true that attitudes and actions described here can make a great marriage, Paul is describing the attitudes and actions needed to do effective local church ministry. You thought about that? Think about that. Doing your God-given ministry with these attitudes will ensure a healthy, humble, Jesus-centered, godly effect on those you minister to in your local church and beyond. I, I've, I've heard it said that we should replace the word love in verses 4 to 7, replace it with Jesus to marvel at our Savior. Then we should replace love with the word I to see how much we need the Savior and where it is that we still need to become more like Him. So try that when we're done. Finally, uh, point number three, love is eternal, verses 8 to 13. Unlike the ministries Paul has been describing, love never fails, love never runs out, and it never ceases. It is the greatest of Christian virtues, and therefore it is better than the gifts, better than the ministries Paul has been describing. I think the point goes something like this, better to love people and not do your God-given ministry than to do your God-given ministry in a harsh selfish, unloving way. Other people in a local church do not exist for your benefit. You exist for their benefit. You were saved to serve God's people, just like Jesus came to serve and to save. You are here to serve so that God would use you to save and to sanctify other people. Listen, love is the only Christian virtue in every book of the New Testament except for one. It is the best word to describe the Father's reasoning for why He sent His Son into the world, John 3, 16. It is the best word used to describe the Son's work in His life and death on the cross, as well as the Spirit's work as showing us Christ with love being the proof that God's Spirit resides in our lives. So Christian, pray for more love. More love for Christ, more love for other Christians, more love for your neighbors, more love for your enemies more love for the lost. Again, read verses 4 to 7 with, while replacing the word love with the word I. And let God's word examine you. 
Then pray for the ones that, are, that stick out and sting most as you go through verses 4 to 7. In the end, 1 Corinthians 16, 14 is key for the Christian's life and for your God-given ministry, which is also called spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 16, 14 says, Let all you do be done in love. That's the standard. That's the goal for our lives. That's the goal for the ministry that we are all supposed to do in our local churches and beyond. And we do that in love because of the love that we've been shown. Hope that was helpful. See you tomorrow for 1 Corinthians 14. Nothing controversial in that chapter at all. Can't wait.